Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of our series. Today we're going to start with chapter 2 and we're going to be working on our first project. So let's get to it. Now, as you saw in the title, we're going to be doing a skull. However, I wanted to change things around because usually whenever you get a ZBrush course, everyone does like a human skull. It's, it's kind of one of those rites of passage that everyone does. And I mean, it's cool. We can learn a lot of uh, from it. Actually, in our past uh, ZBrush uh, uh, video or, or series, we did one of this. Uh, however, it was a little bit more stylized. Today, we're going to go for realistic and we're actually going to be doing a cheetah skull. Okay. So there's a software that I want to share with you before we jump into the into the sculpting part of things, which is called um, PureRef. PureRef. So you can get this software free. You just have to look it up here in Google. It's called PureRef. It's a really lightweight software that allows you to copy any images into your uh, PureRef file. This one right here. And in my case, I have two screens, so I can move this with. <laughs> oh my God! Sorry. I can move this with right click to the other side. I'm gonna be able to see my uh, little skull on one side and sculpt on my on my other screen, okay? So how does this work? Super, super easy. You're gonna select any image like this one. You're just gonna copy and then go into PureRef and Control B to paste. And there we go. You can move these things around, you can scale them, uh, rotate them, whatever you want. So the only thing I wanna do is I wanna get like a couple of, of uh, reference images. And one of the things that's really, really important is you should try to avoid using a sculpted images, okay? You will find, anytime you look for some sort of reference, especially skulls and things like that, you're always gonna find like zebra sculpts or drawings. And the problem with drawings and zebra sculpts is that sometimes, not always, but sometimes, artists will make uh, mistakes on their sculptings or sculptures. So if you use this as a reference, you're gonna be copying those mistakes because it might look good, but again, there might be certain things that are not great. So for instance, like this one right here, I, I mean, you don't need to be an expert artist to know that this is way, way too simplified and it's not what we're looking for. This one, on the other hand, it actually looks quite good. It's a 3D model, looks a little bit better, still a couple of like soft spots. So that's why I always, always recommend you get um, like this kind of things, like replicas, which are fine, or the real deal, right? Like if you can get uh, the actual real deal for your for your sculpture, that's always, that's always great. So for instance, this one, look at this, it's beautiful. Let's copy this. And you can save as many images here on your uh, pure ref file, which is fine. So I'm just gonna move this to the side and now let's jump onto ZBrush and let's start with the project. Today we're gonna start with something called Dynamesh and I'm gonna talk about this feature inside of ZBrush uh, very, very shortly. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna double click and uh, we're inside of uh, inside of our project. I'm gonna get uh, or remove dynamic perspective and let's get to it. So uh, we already know how to move around ZBrush and now it's time that we start thinking about the primary forms that make up this guys right here, okay? So we're going to do the skull open, like this first one that I really, really like. And as you can see, we pretty much have two main bones or two main masses, right? We have the upper mass, which is this one right here, and we have the lower mass, which is the jaw. And if we see it on the front view, we can see where the holes and everything is, right? So uh, it's going to be it's going to be quite interesting to, to create this sort of thing. So whenever we sculpt, primary forms are shapes that capture the general silhouette of our object, okay, or for our, for our character. So in this case, for instance, this upper area has this sort of like, I would say like a rhomboid shape. And, and that's what we need to do. So one rule of thumb that I want you guys to follow is anytime that we're sculpting and we're in the beginning stages of this sculpture, you're gonna be using big brushes and you're gonna be making big changes. So I'm gonna press B, M, and V. Let me turn on our little, um, there we go, key capturer. There we go. So VMB, which is gonna be the shortcut for the move brush. And while taking a look at my pure ref, which I'm gonna move to my second screen right here, I'm gonna start moving these things to generate or start creating the overall shape that I think this skull is gonna have. So I can see kind of like pushes like this. See how I'm moving it like this? I'm gonna go to the back side. let's go like this. I'm definitely gonna push this up because this is gonna be hollow. There we go. It's very, very important that we take a look at the reference because the reference is what's gonna tell us how things are supposed to be. Things a little bit too flat, so let's push it. Again, see how I made the brush bigger and just push it in? And uh, unfortunately for me and uh, for everyone who teaches ZBrush, it's not as easy to teach ZBrush because uh, opposite to Maya or Blender where I can tell you exactly what parameters to use and what uh, tools to use, um, it becomes a little bit difficult, right? Because you you need to, um, what's the word? You need to feel it, okay? So I, I can't really tell you how hard I'm pressing on or the angle at which I'm moving things around. So, so it's a little bit more artistic, which will take a little bit more time. Now I'm gonna show you one of my favorite brushes, which is called the Clay Buildup, and it's B, 
C and V. And the clay buildup I really like, it's like a standard brush, but it's a little bit harsher, it's a little bit more aggressive. And I really like it because I'm gonna be able to really quickly carve in like the main shapes of our object, like this one right here. Now, uh, how am I carving if I didn't change C add to C sub? You can press Alt at any time, and that will do the opposite of whatever is selected. So if right now I have C add selected, by pressing Alt, as you can see, I'm gonna get this uh, inverse effect. So I'm gonna do this, and let's do like the little nose over here. Now here's where things are gonna start getting interesting because as you can see, uh, one thing that's happening is that the polygons that make up my surface, my element, are becoming a little bit too um, stressed, I would say. You can see how it's very smooth and nice over here, and it's really harsh and horrible over here in the eyes. Why is this happening? Well, remember we talked about this button right here, the polyframe? These are all of the polygons that make up our little uh, sculpture right now. And when we use our tools, the move brush, the Damien standard, or the clay build standard, whatever, we're pushing and pulling the polygons up and down into the surface. We're not creating new polygons. That's where Dynamesh comes into play. So if you remember when we started this project, I said that we were gonna start with a Dynamesh, but I didn't mention what that was. As you can imagine, or if you've done a little bit of research before, Dynamesh is a specific way of working inside of ZBrush that recalculates the surface of your object to add more geometry where it needs it. So if it detects that there's a lot of tension over here, like polygons are getting way too stretched, it will add more polygons over there. Right now you can see that we have 43,000 active points. Um, and if I were to turn off Dynamesh and turn it back on, you're gonna see that we're now at 49,000, okay? Um, and uh, as you can see, there's way more resolution here, there's way more resolution here, and now things don't look as bad as they looked before. Now, I don't wanna be going like once and every single time that I need to recalculate, like turning this on and off. I don't wanna do it over here either. This is just for me to know that Dynamesh is right now active. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the shortcut. So let's say that we continue working. Let's use, I'm gonna use my clay build to remove a little bit of the volume from here, which is kind of like the jaw that we have because there's we're gonna have like the, like the main fangs over here. So see, now I'm adding a little bit of volume. I can also go to like the move brush. Let's move this thing around. For instance, over here, we have this very nice zygomatic arch. Well, I'm not sure if it's called the zygomatic arch in, in, the, in the cheetah, but in the humans, it's called that. This one actually, like there's a hole that goes all the way back to the head. So we're gonna have like this sort of effect on the skull, see how I'm using Alt to remove some of the volume. And again, I call this primary forms because we're just getting the general shape. It's kind of like sketching. Like if you like drawing, it's, it's very similar to sketching where you're just like moving a couple of things around to, to create the proper uh, elements. I'm gonna use my move brush and here's where we're looking at your reference is gonna be really important. Take a look at this front view right here and take a look at mine. See how my space on this area is way too big compared to this area. So I need to fix that. Like my head is it's way too big. I, I really like this uh, inclination. I think we're, we're not that far off, um, but we definitely need to fix the, the other parts. So I'm gonna use my move brush, very big brush. I'm just gonna push these things like closer in and get it a little bit closer to the, to the reference. Cause that's, that's what people are gonna expect you to to do on your on your on your creations, they want you to to make sure that you're nailing perfectly or as perfect as possible the reference that you're uh, well referencing, of course. So there we go. Now here we're gonna have a couple of holes where the teeth are gonna be. And again, I'm not worrying about like keeping everything super clean or anything because we are gonna be fixing all of the other stuff. This is just a a rough. Uh, we, we sometimes call it the blocking as well because we're we're just blocking in the general shapes of the element. But see how, again, we have a lot of stress in certain areas. So it's time to recalculate. So I'm gonna press Control and drag outside of my element. This is creating something called a mask. Masks are really useful. We're gonna take a, a closer look at them later on. Uh, but when you create a mask and you have Dynamesh active and the mask does not touch the character, you're outside of the character, it will, that's kind of like the shortcut to recalculate the surface and make sure that this uh, gives us a, a nicer, smoother uh, effect like that. There we go. Now we can start taking a look at like the back part of this thing. So let's start like cutting, 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 cutting here. Just to create like a like a back ridge. Usually skulls have this sort of like back ridge where they attach to the to the rest of the of the elements. I'm actually seeing on one of my references that there's 
like a little crest over here. Very, very useful. There we go. I'm going to use my move brush again and just push this thing a little bit back. Super important. One of the best advices that I can give you guys, always, always, always turn your cameras around, like look around and make sure that you're uh, analyzing your, your object from all of the different areas. Remember the shortcut for the move brush is BMV and the shortcut for the clay buildup is BCB. There's also the standard brush, of course, the, which is BST and that will give you uh, this one. Which, talking about that, there's a little bit of a bug that sometimes happens and people freak out about this. If you by accident press just the T button, you're gonna get this little message that says, hey, you wanna change to 2.5D mode. And if you don't know what you're doing and you just say, yeah, switch, whatever, this is gonna happen. You're gonna start drawing like a lot of different like skulls pretty much everywhere. And you're not gonna be able to continue sculpting. Why is this? Because we jumped from the 3D mode to the 2.5D mode here inside of ZBrush and we're creating like a collage or something. So to clean this up, very easy, you're gonna press Control N to clean the whole thing up. You're gonna draw one skull, just one, and then you're gonna press T again. And that will bring you back to 3D mode and you're gonna be able to continue working. This is also known as edit mode or draw mode. So uh, very, very important that you remember that one because it's a very, very common uh, problem that some of my students face. Let's remove a little bit more of this volume right here and a little bit of the volume right here. There we go. And now, as you can see, the whole skull is becoming very, very nice. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, how, how could we cut a hole through this? Because I know in the reference that all of this area right here is supposed to be missing. Like, is there a way in which we can actually like cut that? And the answer is yes. It's a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna show you, of course. Um, so just make sure to follow this uh, in, in the best possible way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something called an insert multi-mesh. We're gonna insert a mesh but we're gonna insert it in such a way that we subtract it from the object. So let me show you. If you press B, I, you're gonna go into the insert multi-meshes and there's this one called insert multi-mesh primitives. If you click that one, uh, you're gonna see that we have a lot of primitives and these are really, really handy whenever you wanna add a volume like very fast. Like let's say we wanted to add like some spheres over here. You would just select the sphere, draw it on top of the character and then with your W key, you would move it into place. And now when you use control and drag and then control and drag again, those things are gonna be like joined together, okay? So very, very handy. The cool thing about this is for instance, let's use a capsule. If you are, if you press alt and draw, you are gonna draw these pieces, but they're gonna be a little bit invisible. They're there, as you can see, they are there, but they're like upside down. So I'm pressing W and I'm using this little thing called a gizmo to position them where I want them to cut the hole. So let's say right about there. Let's go like about there and there. There we go. Now we really need to make them go across the whole thing. We can rotate them around with a little gizmo. If you've used any other 3D software, these are just like ways to manipulate this object. And now if we press again Q to go back into draw mode, I can press control, drag, control, drag again. And as you can see, we create a hole. So that's gonna allow us to have a little bit more a uh, realistic thing here. Now you can see it gets a little bit tricky here. It gets like super, super thin. To fix that, we're gonna use another brush called the inflate brush, which is B I N, which is the inflate. And we're just gonna inflate that a little bit. You, you never wanna have like super, super thin areas because it, it, it makes it a little bit difficult to work. Now, as you can see, we have the hole. Now it's just a matter of uh, polishing it, right? So uh, I'm just gonna start like doing a little bit of sculpting here so that the hole doesn't look like a completely horrible hole and, and it starts looking a little bit more organic. And, and that's one of the ways that you can use or that you can um, do to create a hole. Another one would be to um, like erase this whole thing altogether and just like pull this thing one side, pull this thing on the other side. And once they meet, when you dynamesh, they should join together, kind of like doing an extrusion. However, I, I really like this method that I just uh, showed you. I think it's, uh, I think it's good. Now I'm gonna repeat it again, just so that everyone is on the same page and then we'll uh, we'll stop this video and we'll jump into the next part, which is the secondary shape. So let's do this again. So you're gonna press B, I, and then you're gonna select this IMM primitives. You're gonna select the capsule and you're gonna draw one capsule and press Alt. Or actually, you're gonna press Alt first and draw the capsule so that it's an inverse capsule. Then you're gonna press W and you're gonna move this capsule around. You're gonna rotate this Remember, you need to press W to access this little gizmo that you have right here, and you're gonna position this. Imagine that we're, we're subtracting this piece from, from the object. So we're gonna position it, I would say, right about there. 
make sure it goes across. Even if it's not like the complete hole, it, it's fine because we can, of course, expand it later on. And once you're ready, once you know that the piece is where it's supposed to be, you're gonna press Q and you're gonna press Control and drag outside of your object. And then again, Control and drag to recalculate. And that will subtract the shape. You can press this uh, key. I have mentioned this one before, which is Shift. Shift will turn your cursor blue and it will soften things up. So it's another way that you can use to, to kind of like blend things together. In this case, I, I kind of like using my clay buildup to give it a more, again, more like an organic feel to the, the whole thing. And there we go. Now, again, as we mentioned, if this thing becomes way, way too thin, you can use VIN, which is the inflate brush, to inflate this a little bit more and get more, more volume. And there we go. As you can see, we have this very, very nice um, blocking of the of the main shape of the head that we're going to be using to, to keep on building on top of this, okay? Now, this is one of the things that it's uh, always a little bit uh, difficult for me to explain, but Sculptures don't start looking great at first. It, it, it's a process where, where more and more refinement will give you a super nice and super complete piece. However, it is a little bit difficult to explain to some students at first that things will take its time. Like you, you won't be having like a perfect sculpture at first. You need to keep polishing until you get a very nice effect. Let's move this thing right here. Now, before we move on to the next part, I want to show you real quick how to save because we've been working for about 20 minutes now and it would be a shame if we lost all of our work. ZBrush has an auto save feature. So if you let it just like sit right here, you're going to see in a couple of seconds, there's going to be like a, like a number over here, like waiting 60 seconds or something, and it will create an automatic quick save. Quick saves by default are saved in this area right here on the quick save folder. And they're a great way to save some of your works because sometimes Seavers will crash and uh, you will get a quick save, which will save you. However, if you don't have a quick save and you wanna like actually save this thing, I'm actually gonna go all the way up here to the tool palette. Okay, tool palette, I'm gonna hit save as. Uh, let me go real quick to our project files. There we go. And we're gonna save this as, uh, or actually this is chapter two. We're gonna save this as uh, cheetah call underscore zero one. I always like to do uh, progressive saves. So if I need to go back to a previous version, I have the previous version. And again, it's very important that you save as a, as a tool. If you try to close ZBrush, it's going to try and say, hey, do you want to do you want to save this as a project, ZBrush project? I don't recommend saving as a ZBrush project. We're going to talk about this later because it usually saves way more information that you need and files become really, really, really heavy. So C tools are usually a better way. You also don't want to save as C files over here. So if you try to save this, you can see it's going to be like a CPR. Uh, that's the project or a GIF or a PNG. You, you don't want that. You want a C tool. C tool is usually the best way to, uh, in my opinion, the best way to save uh, your tools. And yeah, that's it, guys. I'm going to stop it right here. Try to get to this point, just like this general creation of the of the cheetah's uh, head. And uh, I'll see you back on the next one when we add the jaw and start working on some of the secondary forms. So hang on tight and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye bye. Very well, guys. So let's continue with the second part of this um, very nice sculpture, which is the uh, cheetah skull. Now, as you can see here on the reference, the cheetah skull has a jaw, and the jaw is going to be very, very important. This one seems to be a little bit more decomposed. I really like this one right here, which I think it's a cast. I, I think it's like a 3D uh, effect because it's really, really soft. So we're going to use it as a reference, but then we're going to deviate from it and create a little bit more interesting effect, okay? So in order to work with multiple subtools, because yes, we could extrude the jaw from here, but it, I don't think it's really necessary. Uh, we need to use something called a subtool, okay? So as the name implies, a subtool is a another part of the tool. The main tool in this case is the skull. Subtools are going to be extra parts that we have. And generally, as long as you see a different like part, a different island, a different object, you want to keep it as a separate subtool because it will give you better results and in the in the long run. So to add a new subtool is very easy. You're just going to go here to this option right here that says append. You're going to click it, and then you can append any sort of like basic shape. I'm going to start with another sphere which is this one right here now to switch from one subtool to the other you can click it here or click uh, back and you can also press alt and click on the option right here you can see it changes from this like dark gray to like light gray just mm, signifying or, or showing you that it's the selected subtool Couple of things about subtool. Um, there will be something important about which sub subtool is on top. Right now, we're gonna keep it like this, and you can change the name of the subtool. So if you select this subtool and you hit rename, you can just write, for instance, uh, Chica Jaw. 
Okay, and that will keep it a little bit more organized. That's a horrible way to spell. <laughs> I think it's uh, supposed to be like double T and then A. There we go, cheetah jaw. And just hit enter. Um, you can uh, duplicate them, you can delete them. Just be very, very careful deleting these on doable. So if you delete a subtool, you're gonna lose it forever. Just be very mindful of that. Uh, not something that you want. Now, uh, this is something we're gonna be talking about this one later on, uh, but these are visibility like masks or sets. So you you can turn on and off the visibility of an object. So let's say we select the skull and we turn this little eye off, that's gonna turn the jaw off, which is a, a good way to do it. But if you don't wanna do like the little eye, you can also do this uh, visibility sets. So for instance, we can go to visibility set two, which will keep this one on. And then we can go to visibility set three and switch around. So now if we go to visibility one, we have both visibility two, we should only have this one right here. It works a little bit better when you have more subtools. And then visibility tree, it will only have this one right here. Okay, so you can again, switch around uh, each of uh, each one of this ones. Or you can use the little eye uh, button right there. So now it's a matter of mod modifying this and, and creating the, the shape that we want. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my move brush. And I'm gonna start moving this around. Now, as you can see, there's no symmetry. Very careful here. Every time you add a subtool, sometimes by default, it won't have a symmetry. So very important to um, make sure that you, oh, there we go. <laughs> Let me, uh, just very important that we, we modify this. Now I'm going to start pushing this back down like this to create the general shape of the jaw right here. There we go. Very important to go to the front view as well. And this becomes like thinner as we go to the center. Not super thin because we have a couple of teeth on the front. See, you can see me there changing the size of the of the tool a little bit and trying to keep it as straight as possible. There we go. Let's push it forward or backwards. There we go. Smooth. Remember shift smooth. And now we need to do again the same trick that we did before to cut the hole because as you can see here in the reference, the jaw is of course hollow. So you will see this sort of like U shape, but it won't have any sort of uh, any other thing. So here's where turning off the skull will be a, a nice idea. Now um, I'm gonna do the same trick. So I'm gonna use a B, I, and then use a primitive. And let's use the sphere, alt and draw the sphere. There we go. So remember that's like a negative sphere. And then I'm gonna use my move brush to kind of like sculpt the sphere. See how I'm sculpting the sphere right here to kind of go across the whole thing, okay? So it, it can get a little bit tricky because we're seeing like the other side of the sphere, which is fine. And then here on the front view, that gives me roughly a general idea of where this thing's gonna be. There we go. So now again, control, drag, control, drag again to recalculate. Oh, we don't have Dynamesh. We need to turn Dynamesh on, there we go. Um, but unfortunately, since we did this before having Dynamesh, I'm gonna have to redo it. So I'm just gonna press Control C a couple times until we don't have the sphere. There we go. So that's Dynamesh first. Now when we go B I select this EM, IMM primitives, Alt and draw. Now it knows that that sphere is gonna be um, what's the word? It's gonna be subtracted from the main shape. So let's go right about there. Let's go there. Push it like this. There we go. So now I can press Control. Oh, let's push this a little bit more. There we go. Control drag, control drag. And as you can see, we have this very nice hole. Now, as you can see, the borders are really, really inconsistent. I don't like that. So I'm going to smooth them out with smooth with the shift key to clean the borders out. But at least now we have the shape. Now I'm going to introduce you to another one of my favorite uh, brushes, which is called the trim dynamic. And the shortcut is B for brush, T from trim, and then D from dynamic. And this one flattens things out. It's kind of like a bevel. So if you've used any other 3D softwares, um, this one works really, really nicely as a, as a sort of bevel. So it will sharpen some of the corners and it will make sure that we don't have that super sharp, weird line that we have over there. Now be very careful because it follows the normals of your object. So the direction of which the average faces are, are pointing. So you might see some weird behaviors every now and then like there, where it don't, doesn't really know how to do it. So a little bit of smooth and a little bit of dynamesh here and there will be, will be good. There we go. You can also use your clay builder, by the way. So for instance, just start like pushing a couple of these areas here to, to flatten out this uh, jawline that we have. And look at this now. It really looks like a skull, right? Because we have this very nice prominent thing coming here on, on this area. There's like a little hole there. This one attaches like over there. And uh, and we're creating this very nice effect. 
Now, of course, we are missing the, the fangs. I know the fangs are going to be very important and we, we still haven't added them, but we will add them later on. And as you can imagine, we're going to be adding them as uh, separate subtools. And again, this is where, where the process is really important. One of the main things that you want to look up for or, or try to always land on your, on your sculptures is you want to make sure that um, you have a process that will allow you to take any concept, a monster, a character, a creature, a prop, anything, that it will allow you to take any any concept that you're given and deliver a final result. Okay, uh, we we don't work from inspiration. Inspiration is great and it's a it's a great motivator, but we need to have a process. And the process that I'm going to be showing you throughout this whole course is primary forms, secondary forms, tertiary forms, primary details, secondary details, and then micro details. That's going to be our kind of like our mantra or or, or, or the way we're going to be like following everything. I'm gonna jump back here to the to the um, to the main face, and as you can see, we have this area here, like this big fang, and there's this like little cavity, and then we have like the front fangs, and we can see it on this real skull as well. So I am gonna use it, or I'm gonna try and, and capture that here. So I know that there's gonna be like a big fang over here, and then we have a little bit of a, of a crevice, and then we have the eyes. One second. I get this sort of like issue on my on my screen sometimes where where it kind of like forgets <laughs> where we are. It's very weird. Whoa. There we go. It's like a bug. It, it kind of happens sometimes when I press like Alt and Spacebar at the same time. Um, if that happens to you, sometimes you're going to have to reset the software. So just save real quick and then reset. Now this is way thinner. I can see on the reference it's a little bit thinner. So I'm going to start carving out a little bit of the volume here soften up here to, to create like that like the main section over here same for the nose it kind of goes a little bit like further down let's really carve in the the effect here there's like a like a bone in here there we go very cool now here on the top of the nose i can also see that there's like two main volumes so i'm gonna use i'm gonna create like a shotgun um, barrels, you know, like a double shotgun barrel. And I'm going to introduce you to a new brush um, on this video, which is called the Damien Standard. So Damien Standard was named after an artist named Damien who created this brush a long, long time ago. And it's been on ZBrush ever since. And it's BDS, BDS. And with Damien Standard, you're going to be able to carve in. It's kind of like a knife. So we'll create like this very, very nice sharp line here. And then we can smooth this out. And see how nice that transition starts to look here on the on the top of the of the cheetah's eye. Now I can also see here in the reference, especially on the real one, on this one right here. See how the the eye of the of the cheetah is not perfectly circular. And right now, because we use this capsule, ours is looking a little bit too like perfect. So I'm gonna use my move brush again because we're still in the primary and secondary forms, and I'm gonna start like pushing and modifying the form so that it fits a little bit closer to what we have. It's more like a like an accelerated eye. So it's, it's not perfect. That's gonna give us uh, a more realistic look as well, which is of course what we're looking. Now there's also a hole right here where I would expect a nerve to be coming from. So I'm gonna indicate the hole and just smooth it out. There we go. And then on the real skull, I kind of see like, like this thing coming like back like this. And this is one of the cool things. I'm not expecting to have like perfect anatomy, like uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, or perfect, yeah, perfect anatomy representation right now. We're not creating this for like any zoologist or anything. It's just uh, our first exercise, our first uh, like big thing. So the most important thing for me is for you guys to be uh, getting familiarized with all of the tools and with the process, okay? So I'm gonna use my move brush here to move this thing forward because the jaw should be like pretty much straight. And if we have like the like the main like fang over there, we're gonna have like one. Let me take a look at other references. I see like three main three main teeth over here. So it's like one over there, and then like a second one's gonna be like over here, and then a third one's gonna be over there. So that's where the where the main fangs are gonna be. And on the front we have four. So I'm gonna have one again. I'm using Alt, two, three, and four. So that's where the where the teeth are gonna be once we uh, get to the point of adding them. I'm gonna use my alt brush and I'm gonna clean some of the surface because you can see it's starting to look a little bit wonky, a little bit like 
too, too dirty. So all of these areas, one way to clean them up is to just like polish them with clay buildup and then smooth them out. It's, it's very, very common in the sculpting world to, to do something like add the detail and then later on remove it and then add it again and then remove it and add it again. That's gonna add a very nice like natural buildup to the surface and then we'll create a, a nicer effect as you can see like right there. Okay, so don't be afraid to erase and change some of your, your work. It's, it's completely, completely normal. Now, here's uh, where we're going to face one of the main, uh, very common thing, um, in the, and it might happen to you, so I might as well talk about it right now. When you have a, s a small or a soft, um, yeah, or usually like a small or a, like a thin surface, and you use like a very big brush right here, you're gonna see that we're gonna start pushing from the other side like this, and, and that's something that we don't want, right? There's two ways to solve this. First, you can use a smaller brush. If you use a small brush, then the chances of that happening will be uh, less because it, it's not pulling from the other side of the surface. But one thing that you really, really wanna have is this thing called back face masking. Now, as you can see, and you're gonna have it on your on your interface if you're using my same interface. Uh, if you don't have the same interface, you can find it here in the, in the brush menu, and it's called auto masking, and then there's this back face masking, okay? So uh, when you turn this off, it doesn't matter how big your brush is, you're not gonna be pushing or pulling from the other side, which is really, really handy. This is per brush, so every time you change the brush, for instance, let's go to the standard brush, you're gonna have to turn it on again. So that's why I have it as a, as a button right here, because every time I change a, a, a brush, and every time you start ZBrush, you need to uh, select that one as well. So that one's really, really, really important. So let's add like the little holes that we're gonna have, which are gonna be here. These are like the bottom fangs. And then these are a couple of other bottom fangs right here. We're gonna have four over there. And then we're gonna have one, two, and three, okay? So now we have pretty much all of our secondary forms ready to go. As you can see, uh, our scroll is looking better and better every time. And, and again, this is what I was mentioning. Um, I'm not sure if it was at the beginning of this video or on the last one, uh, but sculpting is one of those very like process heavy uh, parts of the whole thing, right? So, so you're gonna be like pushing and pulling and modifying and adapting a lot of these things until it looks really, really good. So you won't have a nice effect at first and, and we can go all the way back here. Like, let's go to this part. We just had a sphere, right? And as we started pulling and pushing the forms, like at this point, you might've been like, this looks horrible. This doesn't look like a cheetah at all. But the more we move it, the more we modify it and the more we um, add to it, the closer and nicer it's starting to look. So this is the process that we follow. For me, I, I try to make these exercises uh, relatively fast fast and quick so that you guys can follow along. But usually this sort of things will take you like a full day, four, five, six hours until you really nail the whole thing. This one's gonna take us about like an hour or maybe a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, just keep in mind that this sort of things take uh, time and, and you need to be patient and you need to uh, build the form until you get it right, okay? So I'm gonna stop the video right here, guys. We're gonna finish here with the, with the uh, secondary forms. And in the next one, we're gonna be talking about the fangs and how we can create a, a very nice and easy way to, to create several of them and, and duplicate them and, and populate the whole thing and start getting like the whole shape of our cheetah together. So keep on working, try to get to this point, try to get the jaw in, try to get like the holes where the fangs are gonna be, polish some of your shapes a little bit more as you can see here, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye. Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of our series. Today we're gonna continue with the tertiary forms, so let's get to it. This is where we left off, and if we take a look at our uh, little reference right here, you can see that one of the things that we're missing are, of course, the fangs. So let me show you a very nice technique that we're going to be using quite a bit throughout the series to generate more meshes uh, in a faster way, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to append a new shape, which in this case is going to be a sphere. And I'm not actually going to position this sphere on the on its actual place just yet. I'm going to use the position that we have right now to sculpt it in this sort of like fang shape. Now, we've talked about this before, but you can press your letter W or click any of these buttons up here to bring up this thing, which is called the gizmo. And this gizmo will allow you to transpose, remove the object around in a very similar fashion to any 3D software like Maya or Blender. Now, I'm gonna move this sphere to the front, as you can see here. Make sure symmetry is turned on as well, so that we're always in the same plane. And I'm gonna make it smaller. Then I'm gonna make it longer, so we create this sort of like fang shape. And I'm gonna use my move brush, here we go, BMV, to create this sort of like curved shape over here. There we go, so you can see it's looking like a, like a fang, right? Now, let's flatten the top here. So I'm gonna use B, T, and D to go into trim dynamic. And I am gonna flatten the surface over here. 
So we can get a, a flat uh, fang. We can actually go, uh, press F here to frame it, there we go. We can actually go into Dynamesh already so that we get this very nice shape. And now I'm gonna start going through the sides and I'm gonna be sharpening this thing. So as you can see, imagine we got like a stick on the on the forest or in the woods and, and we're using a knife to sharpen it. It's a very similar process. It's gonna give us this very natural, this very nice effect uh, in the whole thing. There we go. Now we can go with VMV again with the move brush and push this a little bit closer together so we get a sharper fang. Let's push this one over here. And as you can see, without a lot of effort, we're able to carve or create this very nice, like sharp fang shape. And if, we, if you want to go really, really sharp, we're going to have to to really push the borders over here on the on the back side. Let's go into BMV again and push this again. There we go. See how it's starting to look sharper. So just the combination of train dynamic and, uh, and move brush will allow us to create this very nice fang. Now, it's a matter of positioning this guy exactly where we need. But first, I want to move the pivot point, because as you can see, the pivot point is not in a very practical uh, position, right? It's, it's going to be difficult to line this thing with this thing when the pivot point is down here. So a very quick way to do that is to open this little lock that will allow us to move the pivot point and position it, let's say, over there. Then we lock it again, and now when we move, we're going to be moving again from that specific point. If I want to move this to the side, um, I, I actually recommend to turn off symmetry for this just in case there's any weird like behavior. And now we can scale this down until we're close to the size, which that one seems fairly nice, and position it exactly where we want. There we go. See how cool this looks now? And again, as I've mentioned before, it's very important that whenever you have an object, such as this one, that is uh, made out of different like materials, it's better to do it as separate pieces rather than keeping it as the same uh, as, the, as the head because it will look better and it will give you a, a nicer result. So there we go. Nice little fang over there. Now I want to create the other fang. But before that, I'm actually going to create this inner fang and this inner fang before we, we duplicate or mirror everything to the other side. So the easiest way to do this is to press Control, Alt, and then click on this red arrow or any arrow and that will duplicate the object. So now, as you can see, we don't have to work as much. Remember, work smart, not hard. We don't have to work as much, and we're going to be able to create and position this um, little like uh, fang where it's supposed to be, right about there, I would say. And then again, Control, Alt, and just move it to the side. Let's make this one slightly smaller and get it right there. Cool, right? So now, as you can see, we have the front fangs of our, of our character right here, which you, you can see the distance actually not that great. One, two, three, actually that's six. That's, oh yeah, it's six. So it's one, two, two small ones, and then a bigger one. Okay, so let's do the bigger one. So I'm gonna do Control D, and this one's slightly bigger. I'm actually gonna rotate this one a little bit, like this, move it a little bit forward up. There we go. So that means that, of course, over here, we're going to have to, to do something as well. But there we go. So now, as you can see, we have four uh, fangs right here on our on our character. And this should allow us to uh, mirror them to the other side. However, before we mirror them, it would be a nice idea to add like this, uh, uh, what are they, molars or something over here, which, as you can see, have this very irregular shapes, right? So I'm going to go into Append. I'm going to Append a new sphere. And I want to combine this sphere with the rest of the elements so that all of the teeth are in the same subtool. So I'm going to select this one right here, and there's one called Merge, Merge Down. And it will merge it with the one... Oh my god, okay, so it crashed. This is very common, don't worry. Don't panic, sometimes it happens. And the cool thing about this is usually when it's like a controlled crash, like the one we just saw, um, ZBrush will save a quick save file. So you're going to see it right over here. I'm actually glad it happened on the on this stage of the of the element. No, that's not the one. Make sure you look for the one that says CPR rather than document. So this one right here. There we go. So as you can see, we're pretty much in the exact same place. We just appended this one and, and we're ready to go. So super important, if you ever crash, if you ever get this sort of crashes, save, immediately save. <laughs> Before moving forward, make sure to save a copy just in case this crashes again. So let's try again. I'm going to go Subtools, going to go into the... Oh, it actually did combine them. Perfect. Now, the problem is, as you can see, I can't scale the sphere by itself because it's combined with the rest of the elements. So I'm going to do something very simple here, and it's called a mask. So let's turn off this guy so that we don't see anything. And I'm going to create a mask around the teeth like this. 
Okay, so now the teeth are masked. And if I were, were to go to W again, now only the sphere is gonna be uh, moving. However, the sphere is creating some weird elements, right? So I'm gonna press this little button here, which is called go to unmask center. And I'm gonna press this little um, thing that will make sure that the axis is completely like center again. So now I should be able to work with this as its own like little molar thing, okay? So I'm gonna keep this guy's mask, that's totally fine. And you can see that the molars, they're like weird. They're really weird. So I'm just gonna do like a, a, an abstract sort of shape. So I'm just gonna push this. Let's turn on uh, symmetry again. There we go. So I'm gonna push them like this. I'm gonna use BTD, Trim Dynamic, to flatten this like upper part. Let's sharpen some of the things over here. And then I can see there's like three like big mountains, right? So there's like a, like a mountain here, I'm gonna use my clay build up. So there's one, there's two, and then there's three. So just again, a rough weird shape to kind of get into the shape of the of the of the molar. If we wanted to be like super super precise, we would of course need to look for more reference. But I think this is this is good enough. Now the only problem is if I do dynamesh right now, you can see that the uh, little guys right here, the the three uh, tooths or the three teeth here, uh, is it tooth or teeth? Teeth, right? Teeth, they're plural. So these three little guys right here are getting combined, right? So in order to avoid that, I need to go down here into geometry and I need to go into dynamesh. And there's a little option called groups, which will dynamesh its own group as a separate piece. However, the problem is you can see that all of these guys have different subgroups. These are called polygroups. We're gonna have a, a little bit of a talk later on about polygroups because they're really, really important. But right now, the only thing we need to do is we need to go to polygroups and say auto groups. And what other groups would do, and I can press this as many times to get like different colors. And as you can see, what other groups would do is they will add or create a different polygroup for each specific object. So now if I were to say geometry, dynamesh, but I keep groups turned on and I dynamesh, each object will be dynamesh in its own island. So they will not be combined, which is super, super handy for us. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Now you can see that this one has more resolution. That's because of the size. Uh, depending on the size of your object, the resolution of the dynamic will change. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. So let's go back to Subtool here, turn back on the skulls, grab this guy, let's mask it, and then to invert a mask, you press Control and tap, and that will switch the mask around. So now I'm gonna be able to move this guy. Let's get rid of uh, symmetry. And we're gonna do the exact same process that we did for the, uh, for the front teeth. So we're gonna have like one right there. Again, check the reference. So you can see the first one is, is really small and then there's two like big ones. So this one's gonna be like small one. And then again, control alt. And then the second one, you can see it's a little bit bigger. It actually has a different shape. We can, we can change that later on. And then the third one's really, really big. So again, W, control alt, move to the side. Let's make it smaller. Let's rotate it a little bit, like really get it in there. And there we go. So now all of the teeth of our like skull are there and they're looking quite nice. And again, at this point, you can just use your like move brush and you can see that this one's a little bit more triangular shaped. So just like move this in and create more like, like a triangular shape to the whole thing and, and that's gonna look good. Now, I am gonna go back again into my polygroups because one thing you're gonna notice is that this one don't have any polygroups, they're white, that's bad for us. So I'm gonna go into polygroups and I'm gonna say other groups again so that each individual uh, teeth has one um, specific polygroup. And I'm gonna show you a very, very super handy tool that we're gonna be using quite a bit. I actually don't remember if we have it here. I don't think we have it, but we can add it later on, which is C plugin, Subtool Master, and it's called Mirror. So plugins are, of course, like extra little add-ons, extra little like tools that we have here inside of ZBrush. And there's this one called Subtool Master and this one called Mirror. And Mirror is really, really, really good because as the name implies, you just select the axis, which in this case is the X axis. We select that we wanna keep them in the same subtool and we just hit okay. And as you can see, now we have the exact same teeth on both sides of the element. So pretty cool, right? Look at how nice we have the fangs and the front teeth everything. Now, this doesn't mean that we can't modify things. For instance, now I'm going to turn on symmetry and I'm going to show you BMT, which is move topological. And move topological is really cool because it will only move things that are in the same island of faces. For instance, if I need to move these guys back, I can just like move them and they're only moving, as you can see, the teeth that are um, part of the same island. So again, just the ones. If I were to use the traditional move tool, everything moves, which is not something that we want right now. 
Now, one of the great things about using subtools is the fact that if I were to jump back here to the main uh, main shape of the of the skull and I were to use my clay buildup, every subtool that we have will act as a mask. So if I were to add a little bit of like bone over here, you can see that it very nicely hugs the surface without me having to worry about like going over it. So it knows where the other subtools are and it will create like the perfect cavity for them. So it's really, really, really handy. And that's why I strongly recommend whenever you see an object or a creature that has like multiple parts, do them as separate subtools. It will give you more tools. It will give you more control. And at the end of the day, it will look a lot, a lot nicer as you can see right here. So. And we have a very low intensity. Let's up it up a little bit. There we go. And as you can see, look how nice the transition is now into the fangs and into the molars, right? Really cool. Now, what if, which is a very valid question, what if I wanted to use the same fangs, but down here and the same molars, but down here, is there a way to do it? And the answer is yes, we can duplicate them, but we need to do it in a smart way, okay? So I'm gonna go back to subtools and I'm gonna go back to the teeth here. And a very common option would be well, like, one, why not just like duplicate? And then we double you, we center the pivot thing here, or oh, sorry, here. Let's go to the, oh, to the origin, like here, pressing Alt and then clicking, and then just like rotate this around. And that's it, right? Like we, we could just like rotate this guys around like 180 degrees. And there we go, right? Like we, we could just like position them where they're supposed to go. Well, the problem there is it, we're not gonna get the exact same results. So I'm gonna show you a better way. I'm gonna delete the subtool. Let's go back to this one right here. And what I'm gonna do is I am gonna duplicate it. So I'm gonna duplicate this. Let's shift and click the little eye icon so that we isolate this one. And I only want the fangs. So I'm gonna control shift. This is a very important shortcut. Uh, it works with polygroups only. And it's control shift and click on your object and that will isolate that specific polygroup. And then I'm gonna go into my geometry tab, modify topology and delete hidden. And what that will do is now only these guys are, uh, are here, okay? So the, we, we pretty much deleted all of the other uh, fangs over here. So now it's gonna be a lot easier to move these guys and position them where they're supposed to be. And we could even like, if I were to press X to remove symmetry, I could press Control Shift and Alt and create this red box, which is, is called a visibility box, and hide one of those. Let me show you here. So see how I hit that one, and now I can go again to Geometry and say Delete Hidden. So now only this um, little fang exists. So we pretty much deleted every single other like fang from here, and we just got this one right here. I'm gonna repeat that once we do the molar. So if, if it's a little bit confusing, don't worry. Just wait a couple of minutes, and, and we'll go back to it. I'm gonna move the pivot point here. Remember how we did it before? So we have it right about there. Let's turn on now the jawline and let's move this guy down, rotate it. And then let's like rotate it like this, 180 degrees. So that it's facing forward. And we're gonna of course position it, scale it, probably make it a little bit smaller and position it on this. Like on the reference, I can see that they're slightly like facing outwards so we're gonna move this again a, a little bit there we go let's move the pivot point to the center it's gonna be a little bit easier to manage and just a tad bit smaller just keep, keep playing around with the with the proportions until we get it right or as close as possible there we go i really like how that one looks important to of course turn the other ones on and make sure that they're not like collapsing with each other. So if we need to like rotate them a little bit, uh, I think it's a good idea. There we go. So that looks that looks good. I think size wise a little bit bigger. So let's let's make them like stubbier, shorter. There we go. I think something like that's a little bit better. Perfect. Now we're gonna do the same down here. I can see it's a little bit difficult to see, but it seems like there's six as well. So I'm gonna do six. So again, Control Alt, make them really small. Not really small, but smaller, of course. Rotate them around, so that would be like the first one. Let's make it a little bit thicker there. And then Control Alt, that would be like the second one. It's very important that the third one, it's not super, it's like not, not, not going over the middle uh, point because that could cause issues later on with the mirror. So a little bit there, it's not bad. Just, just be mindful about that. I'm actually gonna say B, uh, again, BMT, which is move topological. And let's just push this guy's like a little bit 
further over here. Again, so they're not exactly in the in the middle section. We can fix all of these elements. That's that's no problem. Uh, we just want to keep them consistent. There we go. So remember what we did before. We were uh, we would go to geometry, and uh, sorry, first to polygroups, to give them a, a polygroup to each uh, little like teeth right there, and then C plugin, mirror, and we would mirror to the other side. There we go. So now we have the uh, bottom row of teeth. And again, if I feel like these are like way too big, which they do seem a little bit too big, I can just say BMT, which is move topological, and start moving like with symmetry, of course, start making them a little bit smaller. Because we can hide all of this with, with bone, with bone from the jar, right? So, so that's gonna make them a little bit smaller. Now, let's repeat uh, real quickly. Oh, okay, yeah, that's Dynamesh over there. Let's Dynamesh real quick. Um, let's actually go again into polygroups, other groups, and then dynamic so that each uh, different or each um, fang has a different polygroup, and there we go. So let's do that same thing that we did, but now for the molars, right? For, for this guys over here. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna duplicate this tool, and then on this du du duplicated tool, let's isolate it. I'm gonna press Control Shift like this to only show this guys right here, both of them. And then I'm gonna remove symmetry and hit Control Shift Alt to hide this one over here, so that only one of them is remaining. And I'm gonna go into Geometry, and then it's uh, Modify Topology. I actually have the button over here, so I'm not gonna use it. This is the last time I'm probably gonna use it over here. So I remember it's in Geometry, Modify Topology, and it's the Delete Hidden. So that's why I have it over here. Delete Hidden. There we go. And now this subtool, it's only one molar. So let's turn on the jaw. Let's move this thing to where it's supposed to be. So this will be like the like the second molar, this one right here, and then there's another one over here, which has a weird shape, which we can always sculpt later on, that's fine. Which is this one right there, and then there's a small one on the front. So again, control alt, make it smaller. There we go. Yeah, that looks that looks good. And uh, we are gonna give each one of them a, its own um, its own polygroup. So we're gonna go polygroups. We're gonna say all the groups. There we go. And then we're gonna say C plugin mirror. We mirror to the X side. There we go. And we're gonna go subtool. And since I don't want to have as many subtools, I know that both of these guys are are the lower teeth. So I'm gonna grab this one. And I'm gonna say merge merge down. Okay. And you can see now this are both like the, the lower teeth. Let's turn everything on. And uh, there we go. That's the tertiary forms, my friends. So let me just rename this real quick. Let's call this lower teeth. And let's rename this one as well to keep everything clean. Upper teeth. And that's all. That's it. Four subtools right now. Here's where, where the visibility um, like uh, sets could come into play because we could separate like one without the teeth, one with the teeth, etc., etc. But as you can see, this is looking pretty, pretty good. We're in a, in a very good position, and now we can start polishing pretty much everything that we have. So we have primary forms, we have secondary forms, we have tertiary form. It's now time that we start polishing these forms before we jump into the detail part. So make sure to move or to advance all the way to this part, my friends. I'm gonna save this real quick just to make sure that we have everything backed up in case anything wrong happens and uh, yeah it's time to start working on the main details we're not details yet we're gonna polish a little bit of these things first and then we're gonna jump into the details so hang on tight and I'll see you back on the next one bye bye hey guys welcome back to the next part of our series today we're gonna continue with the refinement of the skull and we're gonna be talking about something called dynamesh resolution so as you can see, we have a very nice shape. Most of our basic forms are there. It's looking it's looking cool. It's looking close to our, our reference here. Uh, as we've mentioned, this one's a little bit softer. This one's like really, really like damaged and, and corroded or eroded. So we're gonna go to like an in-between. Now, uh, the problem here is we are now faced with a very important conflict, right? And that's the fact that even though our shapes are looking good, we can still see like the pixelation of our elements. And that's because right now, our Dynamesh resolution is set to 128, which is not bad. However, now that we wanna jump into more specific details, like this crevices or like this changes in silhouette and stuff, we definitely are gonna need a little bit more resolution. So my general advice, this is just one way to do things, which is Dynamesh. We're gonna talk about several other ways to build our uh, sculptures later on. Uh, but in Dynamesh, my general 
ad uh, advice is never go higher in resolution until you've used all of the amount of detail that you have available to yourself, okay? So so try to keep your resolution low until you need it because a lot of people tend to go really, really high in the resolution and then it becomes a little bit harder to work because as you're going to see, uh, certain things are going to be a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to up the resolution and recalculate Dynamesh. And as you can see now, my squares, my little squares here are way, way bigger or smaller rather. And that is going to allow me to have a little bit more detail. So let me move this thing to the left side. There we go so that we can see so that I can see the details. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start using again my move brush for instance VMV, but I'm going to use a smaller brush to start changing the silhouette a little bit. So so you're going to see me go in here for instance and then for instance like with the clay build up and I'm going to start like carving in specific areas of the eye. So for instance, let's do like a like a ridge here inside of the eye. Sometimes bones have this sort of ridges and you can see I really like the texture of the of the clay build up. I feel like it looks very like man-made, which is really, really cool. It doesn't look like so CG. So I'm breaking up the silhouette here and I'm I'm kind of like going into the different parts. I can also see there's another like a ridge coming like back here. So I'm gonna kind of like follow this ridge, see how I'm creating this sort of hard surface. -y. And then I'm gonna smooth, of course, I'm gonna smooth to clean that surface up because I, I don't want this to look like a, like bubble gum or chewing gum. I wanna make sure this looks a little bit more interesting, right? So uh, yeah, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna start pushing these things around. There we go, and smoothing them out a little bit. Remember, smoothing is to, to hide some of that texture and then to build up on top of that texture and create some very interesting effects. I like to use my clay build up kind of like a sketching, like a sketching tool, as you can see there. It creates this very, very nice effects, very nice like forms and silhouettes and makes it look very, very natural, very cool. So see, see how nicer this looks? Now, I'm also gonna use my trim dynamic. Trim dynamic is really good to polish and give the bone this sort of like um, what's the word? This sort of like a really strong effect. Let's control N to clean that up. There we go. So again, that's the, that weird little bug. It, I, I found that like turning off and on the, the floor kind of like helps like bring Seabrush back from that uh, limbo or something. So let's go here. Let's start adding this volume. And in one of the reference that we have over here, I can see that the like the fangs, they, they create this sort of like cylindrical effect. Like they're really, really big on the root of the of the of the um, uh, teeth, right? So, so I'm gonna add this sort of effect. See how I'm going side to side, and then smooth them out. And it's gonna create this very, very nice effect over there. Perfect. Same thing for like the front teeth here. We can add like this sort of like root canal sort of thing. So it looks like these things are actually going into the skull, right, into part of the bone. On the on the nose here, I'm actually gonna start carving a little bit more aggressively because usually the, the nose is really, really thin. There's a lot of, uh, of bones inside of the nose and they're really, really fragile. That's why when someone uh, hits someone else on the nose, they usually bleed a lot because there's a lot of bones and, and tissues there that make it a little bit sensible or sensitive. So I'm gonna start like, again, adding form. It's, it's all about adding and removing form, okay? Like changing the way things look to make it look more and more interesting. And notice how I'm not leaving or letting any single space be left without the details, right? So, so I'm making sure to go all around the, the skull and making sure that every single part that I'm working on has at least a little bit of surface detail, a little bit of like tertiary form and polish, because otherwise you're gonna get like certain areas that are like completely unworked and then other areas that are like super, super detailed and that, that doesn't look good. So you, you wanna make sure that this thing looks good from every single angle. Now on the on the damage one, let me show you here. On the damage one, I'm seeing this sort of like very interesting ridge. I really like it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna duplicate or, or kind of copy that thing in here. So it's like a it's like a ridge that goes in here. Because usually the, the skull is not a single bone. It's actually like made out of several bones that connect together, fuse together, and create our our skull or any animal skull. So I'm using here Damien Standard to cut like into the group and then uh, clay build up and see how that makes it look a little bit more natural. Pretty cool, right? This little hole here where one of the nerves is gonna be coming through. Let's make it a little bit deeper. So it's a little bit more, more intense, more visible. There we go. And again, if you really don't know, like, cause I'm not a, a cheetah anatomist, like I, I don't know about uh, like all of the zoology anatomy that I might need to know, but I can I can understand how certain forms and, and things will happen. So if I add just a little bit of noise 
all around here. This is going to make it look like a very old, very damaged skull, which is kind of what we're going for. Sometimes you don't have to be, unless you're working for like a scientific journal or something where, where things need to be perfectly, perfectly scientific and perfectly accurate. Most of the times, as long as you, you capture the essence of the, of the character or of the an animal in this case, you should be, uh, you should be more than fine. So for instance, here, the zygomatic arch, it, it kind of goes like out. So there's a little bit more like going out and going down. It's more like a, like a curve. So I'm gonna use my move brush, big brush, and start moving these things around. There we go. I like it. Now I'm gonna alt click this guy and I also need to increase the resolution. So let's go to like double the resolution and uh, you sometimes need to change something and then dynamish or sometimes just turn on and off again. There we go. And now we should be able to, to start like working a little bit more on the, on the effects. For the jaw, I usually like to have like a strong jaw line down here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna create this little line here with my clay buildup. See how I'm I'm going all the way around, kind of like creating a border. So that when we smooth that border, it kind of looks like a ridge, right? So like a very organic ridge that gives a little bit more support to the whole jaw. You can see that the bone changes here. This is an excellent exercise, by the way. This is why I like or love doing skulls for for a first exercise whenever I'm teaching someone ZBrush, um, because it's it's uh, it, it teaches you to look into the reference and to copy things that are just seeing in the reference and try to match them as closely as possible. And that's always really 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 good. You're gonna see a lot of clicks over there. I might change this uh, size. I think it's a little bit too big. So let me let me try this real quick. Keyboard, let's try font size. Let's do 20. There we go. We can close this. There we go. That should be a little bit less interesting, right? So let's smooth this out to, to clean it up a little bit. Very important to add like the little volume on top of the of the of the molars here to make it seem like they're actually going. And also on the other side, a lot of people forget about the, the inside of the jaw whenever we're doing these things. And there are a couple of angles where you are actually gonna be seeing some of this uh, effects, right? So, so very important. Now we have symmetry turned on. That's, that's of course uh, helping quite a bit because it's, it's making it a little bit easier. Let's add this like root canals again, smooth them out. Same thing on the inside. Let's carve in a little bit here on the inside. Let's add the, the little volume there and smooth out. There we go. So again, as, as we've mentioned before, this is one of the great advantages of having um, subtools made out of uh, different subtools that they know or, or Seabers know that the other subtool is, is acting or working as a mask and they will try to, to move and sculpt around the object so that you don't have any, any issues over there. Now oh, I'm seeing here in the reference that the jaw also has a couple of like little holes, probably again, nerves and stuff. So it's gonna be like a little hole over here. There's another one over here. And over here, it's a change in form. So this thing kind of goes in like this, creates like a interesting ridge and there's like a like small protrusion over here. So again, just add more volume. And it's all about practice, guys. You know, with 3D and with everything art related, the more you practice and the more you, you try yourself at um, this kind of things, the easier and the more natural all of this is gonna come to you. I'm gonna remove some of these things because I think we're going like way too low. Actually, this thing seems to be like going further down or further up. We might need to find a little bit more reference to know exactly where the or the insertion of the jawline is because it seems to be like a little bit wonky right now. I mean, again, as a, as a first exercise, we don't need to be super, super anatomically correct. My main uh, goal with this first exercise is for you guys to get used to the process and to the tools inside of Seabrush. Um, several of my students have tried this exercise before and some of them have like, um, like they're not really happy with the results after a couple of, uh, of tries. If you don't like where yours is going, do it again and again, 
and again and as many times as you need sometimes doing something or, or like an exercise several times really really pushes you and, and makes you learn the things i remember when i did like my first couple of skulls i would do them like two three four five times until you get it something that looked nice and the more skulls you do the more exercises you do the the easier and the nicer everything is going to look so i'm carving a little bit more out here because there's another reference that i'm looking at that has like more holes over here and uh, and this is roughly the, the shape that we're going for very important it's very important that we try to keep the same sort of like consistency on the dynamish so if everything is at like a really high dynamish everything should be at that same dynamish so you can see right now this teeth they don't have the same amount of dynamish so i'm gonna grab the picker here and i'm gonna pick this one right here if i want grab this picker i should be able there we go to grab like this guy right here which says so it should be 264 and when that when we dynamish this guys now there's more resolution and if we need more resolution for those guys, we can go a little bit higher. Careful, Jeff. Just dynamesh. There we go. Let's go. There we go. And then just move this out. Let's turn this on to see the dynamesh. Huh. For some reason, some of them are not dynameshing. I'm going to press Control L. No, sorry. Control uh, F. Oh, my bad. It's not Control F. Control F created a folder, which I don't like or want right now. So let me. I'm going to bring this up. There we go. So we're going to talk about folders later on. Uh, what I want to do is I want to have all of them be the same um, the same polygroup. So I'm going to go down here, polygroups, and I'm going to press other groups. There we go. Sorry, uh, group visible so that all of them are the same. Now we go to geometry. Let's turn this off, and we turn dynamesh on. There we go. See, now all of them have the exact same resolution. They're going to have... And enough, like enoughly like high resolution so that we can work on this elements. For the teeth, the only thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of grunge like on the on the borders. You know how how animal teeth usually are more damaged towards the, the root where the, the food gets stuck. They don't they don't brush their teeth, right? So so we're gonna have a little bit more of that sort of like damage. And then the outer part's gonna be a little bit more nicer. So just a little bit of texture work, especially like on the molars over here. And here's where if you have, uh, if you want to spend the extra time, you can actually go and look up how each of the molars look um, in the in the actual like uh, lurper or cheetah and, uh, and create a very nice or try to copy the exact same thing. There we go. See how that looks a lot nicer. We're going to do the same thing over here. So click this, guys. Let's go to uh, polygroups and we're going to say group visible so that they all share the same polygroup. And now when we dynamesh, you can see this happens now. When this happens, you can see that some of the teeth are, are combining. That's because the resolution is really low. If we increase the resolution and we dynamesh, there will be a little bit of like joining. You can see some of them did join, which is fine. I mean, I don't, I don't mind, especially on those ones that are really close together. Um, but if you don't want that to happen, then you again, you can try doing the the groups thing while keeping the same polygon. So let me show you how that will look. Let me, let's go back. So here again, we go polygroups, other groups. And let's try again geometry with groups turned on, high enough resolution and dynamish. And uh, yeah, that, that actually worked. So now we can just like work with each one of them. And again, same process. We're just going to add a little bit of uh, of dirt and, and noise on the, on the lower end of things. Let's turn on symmetry. So we don't have to work double. Remember, work smart, not hard. And there we go. Look at how nice this is looking. Let's go back here. Remember, to jump from one subtool to the other, it's just about pressing Alt and click on the on the subtool that you want to jump on, and that should give you the the result. Perfect. So I think we're in a very good position, guys. As you can see, our our uh, like cheetah skull is looking really really cool. We're quite close to the to the reference. I mean, we're of course taking some artistic liberties, uh, but as long as you guys are learning the tools, I'm completely happy. Now, uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to be working on the details and we're going to be doing two types of details for this one. We're going to be doing like a general detail and then we're going to do a specific detail. So hang on tight and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye bye. Hi hey guys, welcome back to the next part of our series. Today we're going to continue with the details of the skull. And uh, as I've mentioned in the previous video, we're going to divide the details into two types of details. We're going to do a, a general sort of details, just like noise and general grunge texture to the whole thing. And then we're going to do specific details. Or actually, we're going to do it the other way around. First, we're going to do the specific details, and then we're going to do the, um, the, the different details. So for the specific details, what I want to do is I'm going to grab my uh, Damien standard, BDS. And we're going to be doing like what we did over here, like where, where the bones kind of merge together. And I'm taking a look at reference here. And uh, there's definitely one line coming here through the middle of the nose. 
So I'm using my daemon standard here to, to create this very nice structure, structure line. And this is probably going to go like to the back here. Again, we will need to look for like a specific uh, cheetah anatomy book, but this, this should be good enough. Now, I'm also seeing that it kind of like divides itself through like the sides of the nose all the way to the front of the face. And I call this a specific details because I'm going to be teaching you about alphas very, very shortly. And there are certain things that alphas won't be able to create. And this is one of those things like this sort of lines will be very difficult to to generate or to create with with alphas uh, by themselves. OK, so let's take a look at the reference here. Mm, I kind of want to add like a line here. Again, some of them might not be like anatomically correct, but I just think like the sort of cracks and stuff will look cool on our on our uh, skull overall. On this uh, area back here, like, again, it kind of feels like I would follow this sort of like line or ridge. So let's just go over here. And usually this zygomatic arc either blends or creates like a division over here as well. So again, I'm inventing here a little bit. We're, we're deviating from like an, an accurate like anatomical uh, process. But sometimes the cool factor also comes into play and it's it's fine as long as long uh, as long as the project and the art director are fine with it. So there we go. Because the, the chances of someone being like a cheetah anatomy expert and like taking a look at your skull in a game and being like, oh, that's completely inaccurate. You will never have a line over there are quite low, right? So again, there's a little bit of, uh, unless you're doing like a scientific journal or like a biology textbook or something, there's a little bit of room uh, that you can use. So there's going to be a lot of this sort of things where, where you're going to be going with like Damien the standard, adding like specific little lines, specific little cracks. Let's say maybe this guy had like a very big crack on some part of the skull, like here. So I'm going to break the symmetry, grab my Damien the standard, and let's add just like a big crack. Maybe he, he died while fighting like, I don't know, like a buffalo or something. And he's going to have like a big crack on the skull over here. So this is one of the great things about Seabrush that you're going to be able to modify and change certain things that are going to make your project a lot cooler. So here's, for instance, let's let's break symmetry again. And instead of a crack, let's just create like a little bit of a hole over here. OK, so here's where we're deviating from from symmetry and we're adding like specific details to different parts of the model. We're breaking the symmetry, but we're creating something a lot cooler, right? Something that's going to it's going to be very, very nice. For instance, let's let's add another one of those holes over here and make it seem like this skull has been through through a lot, right? Like maybe it's a fossil. And, uh, and we found it like after a long, long time. So, so there's going to be a little bit of damage here and there, right? So go crazy, have fun, be, be creative, try to find something interesting for your, for your elements. And, uh, and you guys are going to, I think you guys are going to have a great, great time. Super is a super, super fun software. So if you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. There we go. Now it's time to jump into the details. And whenever I talk about the details, I like to use an analogy, which is a cake, right? Everyone has had a cake, like a birthday cake before. And a lot of people are really talented and they create this beautiful decorated cakes. But you should know, and I think everyone knows that even though the, the cake might be like super decorated, if it doesn't taste right, then it doesn't matter how pretty it looks. You need to, it needs to look pretty, but it also needs to taste like good, right? The bread needs to be uh, like very nice, very moist, uh, very fresh. And, and that's the kind of thing that we're, that we're looking for on a, on a cake. Well, the same applies for a sculpture. The detail that I'm going to show you how to do right now is super, 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 super easy to do. But if you don't have good forms, if your primary, secondary, tertiary forms are not done right, then it doesn't matter how much detail you add, it's going to look wrong. It's going to look ugly. OK, so keep that in mind for this next technique. I'm going to go into my standard brush. I'm going to see B S T. And the standard brush is the brush that we're going to use to add like the surface detail. So that it looks like like bone, like like uh, like a rock. And I'm going to change the stroke to spray. Spray is really good. And I'm going to change the alpha to something a little bit grungy. Like um, I'm actually going to go here into the light box and in the alphas, we can grab this sort of um, I don't want to use leather, though. No, that's fine. Let's go here into the alphas here and let's use this like alpha. Which one would be good? I don't want that. That's a little bit too much. Yeah, I think this one alpha 25 can work fine. So what's going to happen now is as we go over the thing, see how we're adding surface detail? That's good. But as you can see, the Dynamesh is still a little bit too low. So I'm going to go into Geometry or Dynamesh over here and just going to increase the resolution. 
Dynamesh, we're over a million polygons now, and we, when we add the details, you can see it's going to look a lot nicer. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to lower this and have this be C sub, so that we're kind of like removing elements from this. And see how easy it is to just cover the whole like surface in this sort of like grainy effect. This is one of the most powerful things about Seabrush, the fact that adding this sort of detail, like this sort of minimal detail, later on we're going to have to talk about like skin detail and stuff, it's a really, really, really easy. As you can see, it really doesn't take that much and we're already covering the whole surface. One of the important things here is you want to keep your brush in the same size because if I change the size of the brush, the size of the detail is also going to change and in this case, that's, that's not what I want. So I want to keep the brush in the very similar size and I don't want to overdo it. One of the very common mistakes is people overdo it and as you can see, it's going to start like eating away from our character and, and that's not what we want. So it's just a very soft thing. Like actually, if you see this from afar, you're not even gonna see the detail. That's why the primary forms and secondary forms are so important because those are the things that you're gonna be seeing the most. Uh, but if you, when you go like up close like this, then we're gonna start seeing this thing and it's gonna look very, very cool. Let's jump onto the jaw and do the same thing. Or actually before that, let's cover every single square inch on this guy. So all, all of it, all of it, all of it so that we don't have any like smooth section or smooth area. Everything should have a little bit of things. Let's go to the jawline now. Same thing, let's increase the resolution. Usually you want close to a million, so that should be good. And as you can see, this is looking way, way nicer. Look at that. Now, see how this is not erasing the, the previous work that we've done? Like we're keeping pretty much the same work that we did before, like the little holes and the and the canals for the for the teeth and everything. And and that's important because again, remember, those are the primary forms. Those are like the building blocks of a whole sculpture. I'm gonna go into trim dynamic. I'm gonna trim this thing a little bit more it looks a little bit too sharp for my taste so there we go now for the teeth i'm actually going to change this i'm going to go in standard i'm going to change this to drag rec and let's use this alpha 60 because alpha 60 will allow me to add this sort of like line see that and again we definitely need a little bit more resolution so let's increase the resolution there we go and now when we add this lines as you can see here it's going to look like the teeth are cracked which is pretty pretty cool be, be gentle, don't 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 overdo it. Like you don't wanna like create such a like dramatic effect or anything. So we wanna keep it simple. That's another one of the of the big secrets here. Keep it simple, keep it nice, don't 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 go overboard here. Now I'm gonna go here and I wanna add a couple of extra details. Now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do um, spray and let's do like little dots like this alpha 23, I really like. And in certain areas, I wanna add like a little bit of like erosion, right? So so a couple of areas of, of my character will have like this sort of erosion sort of thing. And at any point, by the way, at any point, you can just go back and say like, hey, I want like a couple of extra dots and things, like a couple of extra damage in certain areas. Like you're free to go back and change. You might need to rebuild some of the detail, but as you saw, it's actually really, really easy to, to rebuild that sort of detail. So it, it's normal, it's completely normal to, to go from one point to the other and, uh, and be creating this sort of things, okay? So there we go. Nice. Now, later on, we're going to talk about specific alphas and other things that you can do. But I think for now, this is really, really nice. I think we've got to a, a very nice point here with our, our sculpture. So I'm going to stop the video right here, guys. And there's just going to be just one more video in this chapter. We're not going to talk about rendering. Like, how, how can we present this thing in a nicer light, literally? So, yeah, just hang on tight. And I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye. Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of our series. Today we're going to continue with this cool render, so let's get to it. This is what we have right now, and as I've mentioned, we're in a very good position. I think this is a, a this is looking quite nice. You are going to have, of course, all of these files in your project files for you to, to review and check the progress. Let me load like the first one that we did. This is what we had at the beginning, like a couple of, uh, like an hour and a little bit over an hour uh, ago. And look at this, like we've managed to convert this into this a very, very nice skull. So hopefully throughout this uh, first exercise, you've learned a lot about the process and the techniques that we're going to be using. This is pretty much all of the things that we're going to be uh, like this is the process that we're going to be following of course there's a lot more tools that we're going to be learning uh but yeah so now for the render you definitely want to present this to your friends in in facebook instagram or maybe after your uh more experience you want to present this in your portfolio there's of course uh external softwares like maya blender or um what's the word or marmoset zbrush uh, so your key shot like there's a lot of uh, softwares out there but i'm going to show you how to do a quick nice render here inside of uh, zbrush 
if you press this little button right here, which is called the best preview render, you're going to get render and it's immediately going to look a little bit nicer. You can see that the floor uh, acts as a, as a ground plane. So you're going to see the, the shadow being projected there. But the cool thing is there's a couple of lights over here that we can change to generate a uh, like a slightly nicer setup. So I'm gonna open this little thing right here so that we have this element over here. And this first little light bulb, I'm just gonna move it to the side like this. Now, uh, let's change this math kit grade to the starter material. There we go, remember this one? I don't know why I didn't start with this one. I think because we selected the dynamesh sphere, right? So remember the starter material is the one that we got from Glauco. And uh, if we hit BPR now, you can see that we get a very, very nice effect. Now, I can turn a new light over here, turn it on and move this little point to the other side like this. And now if I render, I'm gonna have two points of light. This one's right now being over like written. So, but if I increase this light a little bit more and I hit VPR, you're gonna see that we have a very nice effect here, kind of like a rim light. Now here's where using dynamic perspective might be good because you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna have like a nicer effect. Let's go to like a, like a side view or three quarter view, something something like this so that we can really appreciate it and you can click on any any one of those ones let's say that we want like a top view and then that's like a rim light let's take a look at how this looks not bad right this is a little bit too much so i'm gonna decrease the intensity now there we go now the only thing i don't like about this is that the shadows are a little bit too intense as you can see and uh to change that you're gonna go into render bpr shadow and you're gonna decrease the gi strength so let's say like a point point four so now the shadows are gonna be a little bit lighter. The other thing I don't like, as you can see, is that the light is really sharp. It's like a like a like a flashlight, right? So I'm gonna change this so that it's more like a like an area light. So I'm gonna go again into render and the angle, we're gonna increase the angle a little bit. And the more you increase this, the smoother the shadows are gonna be. So this is gonna look a little bit better. So let's decrease the angle. Let's say like I think like a 50 angle is gonna be fine. There we go. Yeah, that's a lot nicer. And uh, we can, of course, change a couple of other things. For instance, if you increase the rays or you increase the blur, it will it will take a little bit longer. Let's do like four blur and let's do like 54 rays. It will take longer, but it will it should look a little bit nicer. You're going to see how the, the shadow starts looking even nicer and nicer. So this is a great render that you can take. The only thing that you need to do now is to export this. So let's find again like a nice like camera angle. I think this camera angle is, is nice. Let's take a BPR render again. Wait for this to finish. Of course, this is going to be dependent on your on your computer. Uh, if you want to change, you can also change the the focal length of your of your uh, camera. So if you go here, I believe it was on the yeah draw. You can see that right now we're in a 50 focal length. Let's try like an 85 or like even a 24, depending on how intense you want the distortion to be. I think if 85 is going to be a little bit better for what we want. And I want to keep it as like standard as possible. So I think something like this works fine. There we go. So let's VPR again. Wait for this to render. There we go. Now to save this super easy, you're just going to go here into document and you're going to export an uh, image right here. And uh, usually it's going to be a JPEG. I'm going to have it here on the project files. Let's call this cheetah render. And it's going to give you a couple of options here to crop the image if you want to, to have the specific width. Right now, it's, it's almost full uh, full HD. It's not full HD. You definitely want your quality to be at the at the most. And you can adjust a couple of things. You can change the contrast, for instance, if you want like a super contrasty image. You can change like the brightness. Like there's a couple of like post-production things that you can do. I usually don't change a lot of these things. Most of the times I do my renders in other softwares. But again, if you don't want to like... Um, uh, have any issues and just get your, your work done, this is a great way to do it. So I'm just going to hit OK. And uh, if we were to navigate to our, um, to our files, we would find this image over there. That's one way to do it. That's one of the things that you can do. I'm going to show you one more, just one more thing that we can do here. And that thing that I want to show you is the turntable. So a turntable you can do very easily here inside of the movie tab. And the movie tab is really cool because as the name implies, you're going to be able to do a turntable. Now you can actually record your whole session. Uh, when you start working, you can record. And then at the end, it, it creates this time lapse of, of the whole work. We're going to talk about this one later because it, it does take a little bit more memory. Uh, you can do a forward history or backward history, which is also interesting. Uh, if you do like a forward history, you are going to be doing like uh, like how it, everything started. Um, now here it's, uh, as you can see, recording every single step. So we can cancel. Uh, let me, like right now we're not in, um, what's the word? We're not doing any sort of thing. So I'm going to go again here into the movies. Let me delete any movie that I had recorded. 
Oop, and actually don't want to save. Movie, and again, if I were to do forward history, as you can say, uh, see here, it's gonna record a video of the whole process, but it's, it, it's for each subtool. So that's one of the bad things about this. Unless you're doing everything in a single subtool, all of the other subtools are gonna be like finished, and then this is gonna happen. You can see the camera is also moving around really, really, really crazily. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of these things later on. Uh, just keep in mind that we have this. I'm just gonna uh, delete. Let's go all the way to the to the final part, which is this one right here. Let's find a nice like little uh, element here. I'm probably gonna do like no perspective for this one. Oop. So let's go right here, or maybe yeah, let's do no perspective like this, and. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do a BPR. Very important that you do a BPR so that it knows that you wanna do like full resolution here. You're gonna go into movie and you're gonna hit turntable. And what's gonna happen is it will start rendering one frame for this thing. Now, right now it is rendering the frames, but it's not saving them as a, as a movie. It's just rendering the frames. So I'm gonna pause this real quick guys so that this uh, finishes the rendering. It will take, it's, it's taking about like two seconds per frame and I believe it's gonna be like 360 frames. So it's gonna take a couple of minutes here, probably like 10 or 12 minutes. Um, and once it's done, I'm gonna show you how to export that movie so that you can show everyone your little uh, skull as well. As you can see, the only thing is, uh, since we are in this like perfect uh, view, perfect front view, I don't think we're seeing the, the ground plane. Um, but yeah, so let me pause this real quick and I'll be right back when this finishes. Very well, so the movie has finished rendering, so I'm gonna go here again into movie and you can actually go here and say play movie and you're gonna see the movie. Boom. So the only problem, I'm not gonna do it again just because uh, this is not the rendering chapter, we're gonna talk about rendering later on, but the only problem is there's a couple of things like the overlay image and which opacity, the inside going, inside going outside, uh, whether we're recording the whole screen or only the workstation, just, just wanna show you that you can actually record this sort of things inside of Seaverse, no need to have like an external software or anything, and it's gonna look pretty, pretty cool. If you wanna export this, it's just a matter of going here, export, it will give you the same sort of like window that, um, that um, or I think it just does like an, an uh, MP4. Uh, so yeah, that's just a, like a general overview of rendering. But we're gonna talk about this in a little bit more in depth when we get into the final project, which is gonna be very, very cool. So yeah, that's it for this chapter, guys. Make sure to practice, make sure to try to get uh, up to this point where, where the skull is finished. This is gonna be very important so that uh, you are up to speed and that we can continue learning more and more tools here inside of Seabrush. So yeah, hang on tight and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.